every one of us can be overcome by your presence this morning. <laughs> well, could we know your presence <laughs> Whew, pushes away every bit of darkness, every <laughs> uncontrolled circumstance is causing problems. Your presence. just pushes it away there's no comfort like it and Lord I just love the taste mm. I love being part of you receiving glory Lord we give all the glory to you <laughs> but it is so awesome to be able to be part of that mm. <laughs> Lord I know that you're just, <laughs> you're trying to speak to us right now Lord, sometimes we think that it has to be the message. It has to be your word. But uh, we know that the Holy Spirit can speak. And I just feel that right now you're trying to speak to somebody. You're trying to get their attention. He's saying, I'm right here. I'm what you're searching for. I'm what you're searching for. Mm. Again, he says, I am. <laughs> I am what you are searching for. Mm. Thank you for your faithfulness. You're always there. <laughs> you always have been there. And you never fail. psalm says let us be like the tree that is planted by streams of water so that it can yield its fruit in its season Lord I believe it is a season for the church to yield its fruit <laughs> and the great thing about it is its leaf does not wither Its leaf does not wither. We have to keep our eyes, Lord. We know we have to keep our eyes away from all the wicked, the ungodly, because they are like the chaff, the, 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 the chaff that the winds just so easily drives away. The wicked, the ungodly will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Mm. Thank you, Father. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. <laughs> in the one and only name, we speak the name of Jesus. Mm. And the church said, Amen, amen. You can be seated. Take your Bibles this morning. 
Turn to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. I think I think I'm going to go ahead and preface that that this is our last sermon in this series of living life limitless. And I hope during during this series it's something that God has spoke to you about something that you may be limiting your life with course today we're finishing up I think purposeless to purposeful <laughs> purposeless to purposeful if you probably remember back <clears throat> in the early 2000s Rick Warren came out with this famous book and study and I know it's still using to, used today called the purpose driven life and there's a statement that, that he makes in there that is just awesome. He says, the purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment. It's far greater than your peace of mind. Or even your happiness. Wow. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. Now listen, if you want to know why you are placed on this planet, you must begin with God. Everybody say that with me. You must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. <laughs> Purposeless to purposeful. How many of you... At some point in time, it may be even right now, but how many of you have ever felt purposeless? <laughs> There's even days that I feel purposeless. And I believe it is time for us to go from purposeless to purposeful. So let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Luke chapter 15. We're going to begin at verse 11. And read all the way to the end. <laughs> Might find it kind of unusual hmm. using the parable of the lost son for this, but I think it fits and it teaches us so much. So, beginning in verse 11, he also said, This is Jesus talking. A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. So basically he's saying, uh, you ain't dead yet, but still, go ahead and give me what's coming to me. So he distributed the assets to them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had, and he traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. Hmm. I read that, and sometimes I have to wonder, did he jump far to... 20, what are we now, 2022? Verse 15. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country, being one of the Gentiles, who sent him into his feed, fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his field from the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. And when he came to his senses... <laughs> Uh, let me say that again. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food? And here I am, dying of hunger. Hmm. I'll get up, go to my father, and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worried to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and he went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. Mm. He ran, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. 
put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then bring the fattened calf and slaughter it and, and, it's, and let's celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. <laughs> so they begin to celebrate. Hmm. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the, sermon, the, the servants, and he questioning what these things meant. Your brother is here, he told him, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. And he became angry, and he didn't want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him, but he replied to his father, Look! I have been slaving many years for you, and I have never disobeyed your orders. I'd have to question that. Hmm. Yet, you never gave me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your assets with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calf for him. Hmm. Son, he said, you're always with me, and everything I have is yours. And finally, verse 32. But we have had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Father, <laughs> Lord, I thank you for your word. <clears throat> Lord, and all the different things that it teaches us and how every aspect of our life we can find answers to in your word. There is nothing, there is no question that, that, that we can't answer in your word. Lord, I pray for your anointing this morning to fall off inside this room, to anoint every one of our ears, every one of our minds, our hearts, our bodies. To hear what you have to say to each one of us. Hmm. Lord, help us to see how we can look at these words. And we look at these two sons. And how we can learn, number one, to live life limitless. <laughs> because we serve God Almighty. But today we can see how to go from purposeless to purposeful, not for ourselves, but for you, and that you receive all the glory. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen, Amen. You can be seated. Mm. How many of you have ever asked the question? <clears throat> whether asking yourself or talking to somebody else or maybe even praying and just say, what is God's will for my life? Hmm. No, I have multiple times, multiple times in a single day. Uh, and the frequency at which this question comes up lets us know how important this question is to humanity people want to know why they're here at this specific moment in history <laughs> how many of you ever thought man I should have been born back then or maybe some of the old ones thinking well I, I, sh I should have been born later on but it's always a question of what they're supposed to do I mean if this question Anybody here ever played Monopoly? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> but you know, there's a form of Monopoly that, like every time you got to pay the bank or uh, if you go to jail, you got to pay the 50 bucks to get out of jail. Man, don't you wish it only cost 50 bucks to get out of jail? But anyway, all that money goes into the center pile. And then you land on that free parking and you get all that cash. Man, I tell you what, if every time I ask that question, and I had to put a dollar in the middle of the pot. <laughs> or every time I, or if I heard somebody else, every time they asked the question, what's my purpose? And had to put a dollar in the middle of that part. I would love to land on free parking. Not to get the monopoly money, but to get the real money. Where y'all at? Who won? I mean, 
I know a $20 bill doesn't go far today, but it goes further than Monopoly money. <laughs> but you might be asking that question right now yourself, no matter what age you're at, what stage of life you're at. But you know, I believe that there's a more important question. And that question is, who am I to be in the world? Who am I to be in this world? Well, let me put it another way. What self-identity will determine my function? What self-identity will determine my function? You see, our identity determines our function in life. However, most people today, they put their focus on their function instead of their identity. In other words, their function becomes their identity. <laughs> but there's a problem with that. Because if you live like that, you're functioning in areas that ultimately will not bring you joy. <laughs> Most of the time, it will bring you sorrow. It will bring you pain. You, you just won't understand what's going on. You're living a life where you weren't supposed to be. Hmm. Hello. Anybody out there? You ever live life where you weren't supposed to be? Oh, I have. I've been many a times. <laughs> been many a times I picked a lock that God locked, and I opened the door and walked in. Of course, God's sitting there doing this. If it was a text, it'd be SMH. Shake my head. When you know your identity, discovering your function in life will follow. When you know your identity, your function in life will follow. You see, finding your purpose in what you do is like building a house on sand. Everybody knows that parable, right? Because as soon as a storm comes along, as soon as Hurricane Katrina comes along, as soon as something horrible comes along, if you build your life upon your function, <laughs> it's going to tear it apart. But if your life is built upon your identity, hmm, it'll withstand. See, who you are is way more important than what you do. Hmm. Let me say that again. Who you are is way more important than what you do. And when you know who you are, you'll be able to know what you're supposed to do. So that question of what is God's will for my life, if you know your identity, then you will know your purpose in life. But the problem is if we try to develop our identity without God we end up discovering them through possessions mm. we end up developing them through people through popularity mm. kind of like putting an expensive suit on a dead man in the casket it's like well what do you mean well, if, if the man died and all he ever wore was blue jeans and a T-shirt and you go buy an expensive suit and put on him, come on, it's a funeral. My point is, <laughs> millions of people exist in a living funeral because they're ne they have neglected to, uh, to discover their identities. They're trying to live somebody else's identity. Or their living identity according to their function. And they're walking around and they are not joyful. How many of you have ever walked around identifying with your function and you were not happy? You did not have joy. Oh, you might have a little joy here and a little joy there, but it was a constant battle. You almost had to dig up that joy, and you were doing it on your own. Hmm. Who 
people out there that says, <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got my dream job. People out there that say that I, that, that, that I married the spouse of my fantasies. But joy is nowhere to be found. We say, well, if I could just make more money, I would be happy. Man, if I could marry this person, I would be happy. Man, if I could just get this promotion, I would just be so happy. Before we know it, we've lived a life of if I could only fill in the blank then I'd be happy. But the problem is you would never find joy. Hmm. Well, I'm here this morning to tell you it is time for us to, be, to move beyond purpose, purposeless. And to do that, the first thing we need to do, we need to let Jesus shape our identity. Hmm. If we identify and our character is shaped by Jesus, then his thoughts become our thoughts. His character becomes our character, and his actions become our actions. But it can only happen if we allow Jesus to shape our identity. Most of the time it's us trying to shape our identity. <laughs> I'm not an artist. That's Sandy's job. Me, best I could do is draw a stick man. But I'm still going to have to use an eraser. God never has to use an eraser. <laughs> Ooh, hmm. Philippians 2, 3 through 5 says this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Ooh. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others, saying that in a selfish world today. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. That's the reason we have a selfish world today, because we identify with ourselves than we do with Christ Jesus. Colossians 3, 12 through 15, since God chose you to be the holy people that he loves, hmm. he's talking to us. Hmm. You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for others' faults. Let me start that one back over. Make allowance for others' faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Always be thankful. <laughs> Whew. Something that has really been stirring in me. Uh, Jeremy Allsteel, our district youth director, he posted something the other day in Instagram that just really jumped out at me. Is so many times, especially as pastors, he was talking to pastors, but I believe it's with everybody. So many times we get upset because of what we're not getting. Instead, we need to be thankful for what we do have. Mm. Colossians 3 and 17 says and whatever you do or say do it as a representative of the Lord maybe I should read that one again because y'all didn't like that one because I didn't get an amen out of that and it wasn't something I said that was what God said and whatever you do or say do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus giving thanks through him to God the Father <laughs> mm. I could just preach on that verse right there but I won't we'll move on Colossians 1 and 29 says that's why I work and struggle so hard depending upon Christ's mighty power that works within me 
See, people who are shaped by Jesus live without limits. That's the only way that you can live a limitless life is to be shaped by Jesus. Now, to have a limitless life does not mean that you're going to become famous. Does not mean you're going to win the lottery, the Powerball. But what it does mean, if you allow Jesus to form and shape your identity and you live this limitless life, Jesus will get famous. God will receive the glory through your life. Man, that just excites me. I was driving home the other morning from meeting <coughs> uh, Lachelle and picking up little Mason and coming home, and there's a song on Caleb that came on, My Jesus, uh, Ann Wilson. First time I had heard it. That, man, I was ready to jump out on 412 and start telling some folks about My Jesus. Because when that happens, when you allow Jesus to shape your identity, joy will fill your soul. Like, let me tell you about my Jesus. <laughs> He's going to get the glory, but I get, I get to be part of it. Man, I get to be part of it. <laughs> and when that happens, well, let me just tell you this. Maybe you haven't got there yet. But just let me tell you, we were created to live life limitless. One of you believe me. <laughs> we were created. You were created. Every one of us, even the ones that are outside there, that don't know, they were created. We all were created to live life limitless. <laughs> hmm. It's time for us to move beyond purposelessness. We need to let God love us. Hmm. You see, your purpose for existing is this, to let God the Father love you. Hmm. Today's world is miserable. You agree? You know why? Because they have found their purpose in living with prosperity. Material, money, people, power. Doesn't matter. Prosperity is a bunch of different things. That's where people have found it instead of being loved by the one who gives them the stuff. Because everything we have, everything this world has was created by God, is given to us by God. Joy is found in living in our purpose, and our purpose is to let God love us. Psalm 16 and 11 says, You shall know me the way of, you shall show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. We rush around here in this life, on this earth, because we're trying to get ready, whether it's for retirement or do something before we die, we get a bucket list. <laughs> this life is temporary. You know what my bucket list is? I don't have one. <laughs> because... Why well, have a bucket list? A bucket list means I only got so much time to do what's in that bucket, right? My bucket overflows because I got eternal life. <laughs> That's where my identity is. I don't have to worry about that because that's where my identity is. Limitless life begins the day we let the limitless one love us. You don't have to, after you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to do certain things 
to, to, to have this limitless life. No, it begins the day you allow the limitless one to love you. Ephesians 6 and 3, uh, 16 through 21. Now I'm going to read this from the uh, Good News Translation. It says, I asked God from the wealth of his glory to give you power through his spirit to be strong in your inner selves. And I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you may have your roots and foundation in love so that you together with all God's people may have the power to understand how broad, how long, how high, and how deep is Christ's love. Yes, may you come to know his love, although it can never be fully known, and so be completely filled with the very nature of God. So to him, <laughs> by means of his power working in us, is able to do so much more than we could ever ask for or even think of. To God be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ for all time, forever and ever. Amen. You know, when I think about that, he can do so much more than I could ever think of. <laughs> That's why my bucket overruns. Because in my finite mind, I can't even fill up my bucket. But with him... <laughs> There is nothing. It, 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 just, it just overflows. And it goes and it goes. God in Jesus wants to reveal and unleash his limitless power in and through you to do more than you ever thought possible. Hmm. All for his glory, not yours. All for his glory, but your joy. For his glory, for your joy, but for a dysfunctional world. Think about that. Think about where you were before you allowed God to love you and you begin to live a limitless, or uh, yeah, you begin to live a limitless life. <laughs> and the joy that you received and the glory that he got and the effect that it had on a dysfunctional world. Mm. It's time for us to move beyond purposeless. We need to let God rewrite the story of our lives. Every one of us has got a story. Amen. Every one of us has got a testimony. It's time to allow God to rewrite the story that you were living, the, the, the limited life that you were living. It's time to allow God to rewrite it. You know, if we look at this parable that I started off reading, it reveals the heart of God and the purpose of humanity. Here we have a father. He's got two boys, two sons. They're both living with the father. The older son, he seemed, what are you going to say? He was very religious, okay? Externally, he looked like he was a good person. He looked like he was a good and devout son. He was with his father. As later on, we read where he says, I obeyed every command. How many of you, now this goes for boys and girls, ever did everything that your parents obey or told you to do? Oh, I thought Michelle was fixing to raise her hand. <laughs> so externally, he seemed to be good and devout, but the younger son, nah, not so much. <laughs> See, he was the rebellious one. I'm an only child, so I fit every one of those. Instead of following rules, he looked for ways to break rules. <laughs> The older son seemed to find his purpose in following the rules, not in his father's love. The younger son found his purpose in being rebellious, 
and not in his father's love. Both needed grace. Mm. <laughs> Both needed grace, and they needed to find their true purpose. So the younger son, <coughs> he disgraces his father by requesting his inheritance before it was due to him. You see, because back in those days, you stayed, and it was about the land. And it was about growing with the family and, and growing your land. And that's what you did. But he disgraced his father. <laughs> Basically saying, oh, I wish you'd go ahead and die. Give me what is coming, what, what, what would be due to me, and let me go. Boy, if I'd have done that to my father, hmm, <laughs> I wouldn't be standing here talking to you today. But anyway, his father loved him, loved his son so much that he did what he asked. He showed him grace. We do the same thing with God when we take our God-given talents, our God-given intellect, and, and our God-given circumstances, and we use them for our own glory. Huh. And our Father, our Heavenly Father, loves us so much that he shows us grace. Like the younger son that went out and squandered everything that he has. We go out and we squander everything that God has given us. The younger son, he didn't realize that he had all he ever needed in his father's house. We don't realize that we have all we ever needed with our father. He found himself in a pig pen. Ever found yourself there? He found himself rock bottom. I've watered around in the mud hole before. I've watered around in some nastiness. The younger son was spiritually bankrupt, and he was purposeless. He had no purpose. And he finally realized it. Sometimes it takes some of us longer than others. We don't know how long it was that he was in that time, but, but, but he, he finally realized how he had dishonored his father, how he was prideful, how he was rebellious, and how it cost him, how it hurt his father, and he knew, he knew I've got to go back home. He even practiced his speech. He said, well, when I get home, this is what I'm going to say to my father. He practiced it. He knew exactly word for word what he was going to tell him. Look at here. A worthless person acts in a worthless way. This is what purposeless does in your life. We have all that we need in our heavenly father, but we do the same thing that this youngest son did the next thing in the parable <laughs> oh is what the father does and I just want to reread this verse 20 so he got up and he went to his father but while the son was still a long way off hmm, the father saw him so the father was wait was looking for him. He didn't just write him off. He's sitting there and every day he was watching for him. And he's seen him. He's seen him before the son seen him. And he didn't just wait. I, here he comes. I knew he'd be back. Mm -mm. The father had compassion on him. that song that we sing and talk about that is it he runs to us running after me your love runs after me <laughs> he's watching for you waiting on you to return and he's going to run to you and then watch that he runs to him he threw his arms around his neck and he kissed him hmm you know, when I think about my life and all the ways that I've ignored God 
in all the ways that I have lusted for a purpose outside of him, it breaks my heart to picture him standing there looking and waiting for me. Hmm. Having compassion in his heart. Watching and waiting for me to return. So we see the father, he, he runs toward his son, he embraces him with grace and love. Just as he was meant to be embraced and kissed by his father, our purpose is to be embraced and kissed by our heavenly father. In the next verse, we see the father put on a robe, put a robe on his son. He calls for this fine robe to be put on his son and a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Well, those aren't just things, okay? The robe is a sign of honor. See, the son, think about it now. The son had dishonored his father, but the father honored his son. That's grace. It's time for a new label. That new label is purposeful. No more purposeless, purposeful. So let me give you some ways to discover your life's true purpose. Number one, know that you wear God's robe of honor. You are eternally robed with God's honor. Do we, do I, do you deserve this robe of honor? No, uh -uh. no way. You see, but here's the thing. We get robed with honor because Jesus gave you his gift of grace. People will honor you based on your accomplishments. God honors you, robes you based on Jesus' accomplishments. Got nothing to do with what I do. Got nothing to do with what you do. It's because of what Jesus did. Let me tell you what my Jesus did. <laughs> Whew. Number two, recognize that you have God's authority. That was the ring. The ring the young son received meant that his father's authority belonged to him. Even though he had disrespected, even though he had lost his father's authority, his father gave it back to him as a gift. That's grace. And because you are in Christ, God has given you, each and every one of you, his authority. <laughs> his authority to speak in Jesus' name. Mm. <laughs> to speak things in Jesus' name, and they... <laughs> mm. Number three, know that you are God's child and not a hired servant. See, the gift of the shoes meant he was a son, not a hired servant. Hmm. The father was saying, you will always be my son. Even though you slip and fall, you will always be my child. Let me put it to you that way. Each and every one of you. You will always, God is saying, you will always be my child. No matter what. No matter because, you know, you got angry and it caused you to sin. As long as you turn back to him. <laughs> Remember, God's watching. He's waiting. He has compassion. <laughs> you will always be his son. Despite the betrayal. Despite sin. Despite disrespect. Despite shame. The father threw this huge party and celebrated his return. That's grace. Man, when somebody comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that's we should have a party. <laughs> we all love to eat. Amen? Man, I can't believe that more of y'all didn't say amen on that because I've seen every one of you back there eating before. This is a tough group this morning. 
Number four, the final one, know that God celebrates you. Mm. Even when you think nobody else is celebrating you, God celebrates you. <laughs> uh. See, you are God's child, and he celebrates you because you are his child. Mm. He celebrates you because you are in his son, Jesus, not because of your accomplishments. Because every one of you is like me. I fall short. I fail many times. But because of Jesus' accomplishments, therefore we are forever loved by God. Remember that speech that the son practiced? I imagine the whole time he went, he practiced and practiced it. I mean, he had it down pat. He knew exactly what he was going to say. You notice the father totally ignored it? <laughs> I don't know if you ever thought about that or not. When you read that scripture, the father totally ignored what he said. Basically, the parable tells us that access to God is not found through religion, but through his grace. Hmm. Shannon, you want to come on up, please, sir. Before we close, though, hmm. We can't leave out the angry older brother. See, because a lot of times we fit in that. See, because sadly, he was just as far away from his father as the younger rebellious one was. A lot of times we inside the church, we look at the ones out there and we think, man, they are so far away from God. And we're sitting up here, we're just like the angry older brother. Especially when God goes out there and does something. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't tell me you don't feel like that. Like, why in the world? What'd you just say? Oh, I thought you said I do that. <laughs> but we do that. We're like the children. Why did he get it? Do you not see what I did? God? Mm. He is a model of someone with a spiritually dead, who, <laughs> spiritually dead, and he is living a religious life. People who do not understand grace are quick to talk about their performance when they feel wronged. He was a victim. Who ever had that victim mentality? <laughs> you should be celebrating with me. I deserve more. I, I, I. See, he found purpose in being good, not being loved by his father. That's where his identity was. Religion says, I'm a good person. Look at what I've done. Grace says, the only goodness in me is Jesus. <laughs> Look at the good things that Jesus has done for me. That's not being prideful. <laughs> he loved me. Man, that should get us so excited that we want to go tell everybody else, let me tell you about my Jesus. You're suffering? Hmm, let me tell you about my Jesus. You got too much weight on your shoulders? Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. <laughs> now watch this statement right here. So in these two brothers, one found his purpose, the other one missed his purpose. One found his purpose. The other one missed his purpose. Tragically, many people who follow Jesus live limitless lives, lives, just like the older brother. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live a limitless life. I want to live a limit full life. 
said they're wrong. A limitless nest. I could tell Sandy was giving me a look. Both sons had abandoned their father's love, but also their purpose for their lives, but in different ways. Some of us in here, we have abandoned the purpose in our lives that God has for us, but in different ways. Look here, both of them were lost. We're all lost. Hmm? Both tried to save themselves. <laughs> Every one of us in here, we've tried to save ourselves. But the younger let his father save him. The younger let his father restore him to his purpose. We need to remember your purpose is to be loved by God. We need to Remember to build our life on something that is solid. <laughs> on Christ, the solid rock I stand. We need to build our life on something immovable. <laughs> we need to build our life on something unchanging. And all that is God the Father. It's time to go from purposeless to purposeful. Let me get everybody to stand. Let me get all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Maybe you're here this morning, and like I started from the beginning, I made a statement about that question, what is my purpose? You might ask the question, what is my purpose in life? You may ask the question, what is God's purpose for my life? Maybe you're asking that question now, or you've asked it in the past. But then I ask you the question is, where is your identity? Who is your identity in? Is your identity in what you function? Is your identity in God or is it in yourself or is it in your family? I can honestly admit at one time my identity was in my family. Father, I come to you this morning and I just pray right now <laughs> that you would speak to each and every one of us and that if there's anyone here this morning that is searching for their identity and they have never found their identity in you, that this morning would be the morning that they find you <laughs> and they identify with you. I pray for the freedom to be inside this room these altars are open if we're ready for that purposeful life